Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about prospect leads and concepts of hydrocarbon exploration. So how we move through the exploration funnel. So we start off with, with concepts, twinkle and George Sai, move on to leads, things that are a little more mature, move on to prospects, which have an identified volumetric range and a chance of success, do some work to get the prospects ready to drill, then we either get a discovery or we get a try well. But at each stage, Concepts drop out because they're no longer valid, leads drop out because they're no longer valid, prospects drop out because they're no longer valid. So do more work to try to reduce risk, try to increase the chances of success. Doesn't always work, but that's what we do. So this is an old cartoon, and you know, sometimes the old ones are the good ones. You know, go out to sea, find some more, drink a big hole, bingo, sorted. Well, life's not quite like that. Wish it was. But the general public, or non geologists to be honest, some geologists as well, have some confusion as to what terms prospect, lead and concept are, and they're quite often confused yet to find with um, what is actually there. So some misleading press articles. So this is an article in Daily Express. Well, you would expect it to be perhaps misleading. Sorry about the prejudice here. But, you know, Russia finds massive oil reserves and gas reserves in British territory, sparking drilling features. Well, this is some potential that's been identified in what is referred to by Britain as the British Antarctic Territory, or the BAT. Now, it's not actually recognised as sovereign UK territory due to the Antarctic Treaty, because all uh, claims in Antarctica are suspended for the duration. So, UK doesn't actually have control over that. Now, you can't drill in the area because that's banned by treaty as well. Now, some researchers have some geophysical data, that data has been interpreted, and so they have some idea, some potential, something that might happen. But this is a, an operative thing here is might, also might not, and it will be a very distant future. Now there are quite a lot of political and economic hurdles that just they're not going to be overcome realistically before any drilling takes place. In my opinion, well, sometimes I don't think there are places on earth where perhaps you don't want to drill, and that's may come strange coming from a petroleum geologist. And then drilling is unlikely to be successful. Now frontier bases have a chance of success of 10%, so some of them do work, but most of them don't. So again, much ado about a headline which is misleading by someone who doesn't understand the full concepts, which is what this video is about. Again, a lot of fuss about some prospects this time in uh, South Korea. Now, uh, this uh, American uh, geologist has identified some potential prospects offshore South Korea, but nothing has been drilled yet. Some prospects have been identified. But the media is already talking about giant reserves and getting caught up in the hype, you know, this guy's like the new Hiddink. Hiddink was a Dutch football manager. Gus Hiddink was the manager of South Korea and was the most successful manager they've had. Foreigner they brought in to give some expertise because locals weren't doing it. Now, I think that's a little bit unfair to KNOC, the Korean National Oil Company. They're very competent people. I've worked with some of them who've been partners in joint ventures that I was, uh, yeah, I was, that my company was involved in. They're quite competent. They know what they're doing. Now, yeah, you've got a new person coming in with new ideas. Maybe it might work, but don't get caught up in the hype because nothing has been proven yet. So a little bit about the NP life cycle. So play definition, defining potential plays, and I'll talk about what a play is in, in a minute. Then exploration, finding stuff, appraisal, finding out how much you've got and getting the thing to development, then production and decommission. Here you're talking about stuff that's in the very play definition stage. Could come to something, could come to nothing. But again, you need to do the work, you need to understand what's going on. Moving to oil reserves and fishing, so something perhaps more aimed at uh, the layman. The um, diagram on the right is the PRMS, the, per, the reserve system. Uh, so you've got reserves, which are commercial hydrocarbons, which have been discovered. When they come into small, uh, you know, proved, we can guarantee, probable, what you think is likely to be there, and possible what might be there with the following wind. Then you have contingent resources, which is hydrocarbons have been discovered, but haven't been demonstrated to be commercial yet, and they might not be. They might be commercial at some point in the future, might be, might never become commercial. Again, uh, 1C, something which you've demonstrated to guarantee that exists, 2C, what you probably think is there, and 3C, what might be there with the following wind. And prospective resources, things that might be there, twinkles and George aside. Now we have low estimates, mid estimate, high estimates. So if you look at exploration potential, we got a lake. There might be some fish in there. Well, yeah, that might be the case with what you're looking for in the Antarctic. Might be fish, might not be any fish. Then, if you're looking at the Korean example, you've got yet to find out discovered resources. 
I reckon there might be 150,000 fish in the lake. I've seen some fish, honest. Yeah. But are these fish going to bite? Don't know. Discovery resources. You've got some fish. They've taken the bait on the line, but they could escape. You haven't reeled them in yet. Reserves of fish you've got in the keep net. Now, they're there for the future, but the keep net might have some coals. The reserves aren't 100% guaranteed, which is why you've got the 2P and the 3P categories. Oil stocks inventory. You've got some fish. You wait to cook them. You find products. You cook the fish. You use the production. Fish you've eaten. So happy fishing. But that's an understood way of understanding reserves and resources for, for lay people. So next one here is basins, systems, plays and prospects. Now I've got a, uh, my play fairway evaluation course, which I put on my YouTube channel. And that will explain some of the concepts in more detail. But basically you start with a sedimentary basin, geological area filled with sedimentary rocks, which may contain more than more source rock. The air petroleum systems, you have a source rock. Again, I've got a video on source rocks on my channel. Please have a look at that one. It defines what a hydrocarbon uh, generating source rock is. It's a shale with organic matter, which has been heated up. And heated organic matter is now given off kerogens and hydrocarbons. Petroleum plays. So you've got a common reservoir unit, defined age, sedimentary structure, etc. that you understand. So this, the plays are being fed by petroleum systems. And then you've got discoveries and prospects and leads. So these are features, hydrocarbon traps, which may or may not contain hydrocarbons. Discoveries always contain hydrocarbons, prospects and leads may or may not. Um, so that's where those come in. So you have a pyramid. So a basin, petroleum systems, petroleum plays, discoveries, prospects and leads. So in the terms of uh, Antarctica, you're talking here. In the terms of South Korea, you might be talking about here. I don't know enough about the area. So concepts, leads and, and prospects. So concepts and idea George has that may turn into a prospective lead. So it's within a play, maybe defining a new play, maybe extending the existing play. Again, might work, might not. A lead's a little bit more concrete. So it's a defined geological feature which might be matured into a prospect. It's got some volumes, it's got some risks, but then less well defined, less understood, needs a bit more work to try to nail down whether it's going to go anywhere or not. And a prospect's a defined hydrocarbon feature which may or may not contain hydrocarbons. More definition, maybe worked up to a ready to draw stage, got a volumetric range just narrow enough, got a risk chance success that's narrow enough, you need to make a decision whether you're going to draw it or not. So this is a diagram we had on the header. So concepts, ideas of geologists, some are mature into leads, some may be dropped. Leads, mature into prospects not ready to drill yet, some may be dropped. Prospects that are not ready to drill, got quite a bit of definition, but you can do more work to try to reduce the risk, try to reduce the reserves range, try to understand what's going on. Again, some of those might not work, they'll be dropped, which is not going to make it, not economic enough. The risk reserves just aren't there in terms of uh, what's uh, risk resources. And prospects are already drilled. You've got risk resources that are likely to be economic, got a reasonable chance of success, but some of them work, some of them don't. So Discovery has hydrocarbons, which might become commercial, and a dry well has no potential commercial hydrocarbons. It may contain a small amount of hydrocarbon, which is very frustrating when that happens, uh, but or it may contain no hydrocarbons at all, it might be bone dry. So again, I've got a video on my channel talking about why geologists drill dry wells and analysis of wells. A little bit about the amount of data you have. So you've got available data here. So concept could be variable. If you're frontier basin, you could have a few 2D seismic lines. If you're in a uh, mature area, we're looking at a new concept, a new play. You will have more data. You'll have uh, 3D data. You may have CSEM data, etc. The volumetric estimate, you know, back of the spreadsheet, um, area thickness. You need a wide range because you really don't know. Relatively low chance of success, and to twinkle in the Georgia side. Lead, again, data, depending on the maturity of the area. You may have a 3D survey. Great. You've got a basic area depth with a wide range. More detail. Again, looking at play favor analysis. Again, a little bit more, a little bit less risky, but still, still there. You need to identify what you need to do to kill a cure. Because that's what you want to do. You want to make the right decision. Either it's no good, or it potentially might be good. Prospects ready to drill. Quite a lot more data. Got more detailed uh, gross rock volume estimate. I've got a video on gross rock volume estimate that's on my channel. What that is explains what that is. Uh, please have a look at that. Again, more detail. Um, chance of success is increased. Alternatively, it's decreased so low that you just don't want to do it anymore. And then, ready to drill. You've done as much work as you can. It's not going to, the range isn't going to change very much. So you now need to drill a drop, basically. So you're planning the well, getting on there. 
With the discovery, you found hydrocarbons, do a lot more work. May have proven the segments. Again, I've got a video on my channel talking about segments. We're ready to appraise. So do we move forward? Do we exit with that decision? Uh, so the aim of the exploration prospects is, first of all, to generate new ideas and concepts. And then you need to mature these ideas by robust evaluation and challenge. So going through the funnel, but you need to fill the funnel to begin with. So I've got videos on my channel on how you do risking. So how to drill just risk exploration wells. I've got videos on my channel on volume. So please have a look at those. But the key thing here is you need to make a decision on drill or drop. A little bit of what, but what you do with geological work. So again, risk polarization, the confidence smile. So when you know nothing, it's like 50-50. But you really want to get either here, which is ideal. You've got high confidence, high knowledge. You think it's probably going to work. Well, guaranteed, obviously, but more likely than not. Or low chance of success, but high knowledge. Where you've got indicators that it really isn't going to work. So it's you save you drilling a dry well. Now, you could obviously be wrong. Someone could come in. Uh, think differently and then you may have a bit of egg on your face but that's the way it is so again you want to do your geological work to go here or here try to get to, to an irreducible risk so what are typical chances of success well key point here is exploration wells are risky most exploration wells that you will drill will be dry you're more likely to fail than you are to succeed very hard for people outside oil business to to, to get that but to put it in, in racing context, and Royal Ascot's on right now, just a couple of miles from where I am, a big horse racing meeting, is basically you're given a um, 10 to 1 odds on a 3 to 1 horse. So you've got a bookie that gives you those sort of uh, odds where when you win, you win big, and that makes up for all your losses. So in a mature basin, when you've got a geo some geophysical support, and I've got a video on direct hydrocarbon in indicators on my channel, what those are, got 50 to 60 percent chance of success you know that's pretty pretty high but even then half the time you're going to fail if you've got no geophysical support in the mature basin and you don't expect any because of the way the rocks are 30 40 percent you've got a new play a new basin where you have got no calibration for geophysical support you've got some positive indicators 25 30. you've got a new basin or play without geophysical support but you don't expect any but you kind of have a vague positive feeling about it, 20%, you know, uh, four to one odds in racing parlance, 10% in complete frontier basin. And those are roughly what, uh, what risks are. We tend to slightly, to be honest, overestimate uh, um, our risks, underestimate our chances of success, but overestimate the volumes, but that's another conversation. So as part of the work we do, we also narrow the volumetric range. So this is a diagram of different types of work you can have, different sort of static data, different dynamic data. Again, you don't get any of that until you, start, until you actually find anything in terms of dynamic data, pressures, flow rates, etc., and different volumetric methods. Again, more geophysical data, more static data, etc. Now, producing fields have narrow range, so this basically is a cone of uncertainty which you're trying to narrow down. So sum up. There's a massive difference between petroleum potential and discovery resource, discovery resource and hydrocarbon reserves. And quite a few people just don't get it. Now, please have a look at this video and get yourself in the position where you have some knowledge. And there's a progression from concept to discovery. There are many hurdles and pitfalls along the way, and many concepts don't make it to discovery stage. Most of them don't. You got something like potentially I don't know, 50, 60 concepts before you get to discovery. Most of those will actually drop out before you even drill them because the, uh, the data indicates that uh, the things are unlikely to work. But unfortunately, many media, politicians, etc., decision makers don't understand these differences and they tend to get carried away. And there are people with agendas that can and do exploit the situation, you know, just to get uh, more attention to what they're doing. So beware people with agendas and have a, have a discussion, have a look at what that is. So thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.